Morning, people, and welcome back to the Just Your Football Show. And it's time for your Leeds versus Southampton preview. Normal football is back, normality is resumed, and Leeds, for me, have a very you know positive, favourable fixture to look forward to at the weekend, and hopefully will get back-to-back -back wins. Listen, I'm not writing it off. It's not a foregone conclusion. Southampton are going to always be a difficult uh, team for us to face. But as I mentioned the other day, um, we have the best record against Southampton, uh, better than any other team we have um, in the Premier League currently for wins. We have 14 wins in total against Southampton in the Premier League. Um, we beat them home and away last season. They are without key personnel. They've not had a great start to the season themselves. Um, I, it's actually the first game without James Ward-Prowse in two years. Two years. Uh, that man's been a mainstay in their side. Obviously, he's out suspended. No Shea Adams. He was pulled from the Scotland squad. Um, so there's two key figures out of this side. No Jack Stevens either. Um, so not, uh, you know, a fully strength back line, what you, what, what, what you would normally expect. Of course, they're weaker as well for me than they were last season. No Vestergaard, no Danny Ings either. Um, so, so that's positives for Leeds United to take. They've actually scored no goal in open play since August the 28th, guys, as well. Um, which in footballing times, like that's that's a long time, you know. Um, they've only scored five goals in 2021. Um, it seems like Ralph Hasenhutl had this ambition to beat Jurgen Klopp. And I'm sorry to mention this again, I always do. He beat Jurgen Klopp, he cried, and then was like, I've won the Jurgen Klopp trophy, I never need to do anything again, and has just said, Nah, we'll just leave it. Like I say, five goals scored in 2021. Um, that's mad, really, when you consider um, that we are in October and we have played a hell of a lot of football. Um, so, yeah, no goal in open play as well since August the 28th, um, which I was already confident leading into this fixture, but actually spending some time yesterday with the lads from the Match Day Vlogs at, at, at Southampton um uh, a YouTube channel and, and as they were revealing these things to me it was just getting me more and more infused you know they will likely line up with two up top uh, I expect Adam Armstrong and um, Theo Walcott again Theo Walcott doesn't really concern me maybe 10 year ago five year ago maybe the case but but, but not so much now. Um, obviously, Shea Adams is a massive miss for them. Um, they have Gineppo, Teller, you know, wingers. Again, whenever we've been up against them, I've not been overly concerned. I think in the middle, it'll be Diallo, Romeo. They're going to miss James Ward-Prowse. Of course, they're going to miss his deliveries, his set pieces. But not only that, just him being able to pick a pass. He's a massive, massive loss um, for, for Southampton. Um, look, I think the, the, the biggest areas of focus for me are the, the fullbacks. You know, the fullbacks, of course, Liveramento uh, on the graphic here next to Dan James, bought him from Chelsea. Um, they've stuck a buyback clause on him, and you can see why, because he's had a fantastic start to the season. Um, and Roman Perot as well. Although Perot has only played, I think, in the initial two fixtures and bench for the last four of the last five top flight fixtures, um, he's, a, he's a player that, that I'm very keen on seeing, um, you know, of course, Leeds United were linked to Romain Perot for, for quite a long time. I know uh, Ralph has opted to play Kyle Walker-Peters at left back as a as opposed to Perot, but I expect Perot to, to come back in for this fixture just because, you know, he, he had a move to Leeds United, uh, United, signed, sealed, delivered kind of thing, and then we opted for Firpo. He'll have a point to prove. Um, by all accounts, his delivery has been exceptional when he has played. Um, so, so he's someone I expect to play, and that'd be my key focus in the battle that you know Dan James or Rafinha or Harrison, and we'll touch on Rafinha in a sec, have against these two. Uh, you know these two fullbacks. Uh, of course, Bednarak will play in uh, centre back as well. Um, no, no Vestigard and Vestigard. To be fair, looking at the games we played last season, was uh, uh, a problem for us. You know, he he can carry the ball, and he was doing that at will at times, uh, especially in the fixture at uh, St Mary's where yes you know 
they played well first half. We eventually took control, and that that was the case in a lot of these type of games: Newcastle, Burnley, Southampton. It's not been the case this season. So again, I'm not going to go all out. Although I did against Watford because I was really confident with this. My my prediction for this, I'm a little. I'll give my reasons as to why, but I think it's going to be tight. Although I do think we will win the game. Um, Look, Leeds United more than likely will will line up with a three three one three. We will do that to counteract the the two up top. And as I say, I believe it'll be Walcott or Armstrong. Maybe it'll be Boyer. I think they brought in Boyer from Chelsea uh, alone. I think that was. I'm not sure if it was a permanent, but he hasn't seen much game time. I think he played in the cup. Um, but like I say, I expect Walcott and Armstrong. And to counteract that, we probably will go with a three three one three. What that means for Leeds United is obviously three centre backs. Now we have. Apart from Robin Cock, who's still out, he's in he's in America currently. We had a bit of an injury update from uh, Marcelo Bielsa. He's in America, having work done on his pubis. Uh, Luke Kalin, he's still out. Um, I think Adam Forshaw's back and available for selection. Whether he'll be used, I'm not sure. Somerville's available. Stuart Dallas is fit as well. And um, we know last time out against Watford, he went off. Calvin's touch and go. Uh, we know Calvin pulled out of the England setup. That's a big worry for me, but I think Calvin will make it. I'm hopeful Calvin will make it because if we lose him, then it's it's a bit all over. But then again, look, you'd have Creswell. You'd have Creswell that are coming in the back three for me and Pascal will play in the DM if Calvin isn't fit. There's plenty of different permutations and we'll go through them in, in just a sec. And of course, the big one, Rafinha, um, you know, he is rumoured to be starting. Um, they're due to play 1.30 uh, UK time on Friday, I think. So that's going to leave like, uh, such a short turnaround. Bielsa was asked about the question. Uh, he said, look, um, there's no doubt that it's a short turnaround. The option he has to participate on Saturday depends whether he plays this final game for Brazil. So if you're worried about that, check. If he plays, if he starts, then know that he's not playing for Leeds United. Uh, Bielsa did say it depends on how many minutes he plays and how he finishes the game and how efficient his rest is. Um, he said, considering that a third of those hours before Southampton will be spent flying, um, if there's any risk that fatigue could cause injuries, then we won't risk it. There are so many aspects to consider that I can't offer any certainties. I think it would be best if we just, you know, said, let's not play him. Like, I know we need him, but I think maybe it might be best to see him on the bench. Harrison's fit. Dan James has been playing well of late. Let them two start the game. And if we need to call on Rafinha, then we can do that. Um, but let's what I would go through with in terms of my lineup. Of course, of course, the Le Chat, Ilian Melier starts in goal. Your back three for me will consist of Lorente on the right, Pascal Strauch on the left, and Liam Cooper in the center of that back three. That's strong. That's strong. Cooper and Lorente were exceptional last time out. Put Pascal Strauch in there. It, it's even stronger. It is even stronger. Um, right wing back. This will be up for contention for me. If I if I could have a word with Bielsa now, I would say keep Jamie Shackleton. Keep Jamie Shackleton. I have a sneaky suspicion he will put Dallas there, regardless of what Dallas did last season. He's honest. This season he's not been quite up to scratch. Jamie Shackleton has. Whenever he's played on the right side of the back line, he has been great for me and keeps on improving. So if he's going to base it on current form, then for me, Jamie Shackleton starts at right wing back. Left wing back, of course, will be Junior Firpo. Calvin then in the DM. Now, it will be interesting if Calvin is out, then I fully expect Pascal Strout to go in there and Charlie Creswell to join the back line. And seeing Charlie Creswell against West Ham, what he did at Fulham, that doesn't concern me. Of course, the DM would be a worry because we know whenever anyone's gone in there, i.e. Robin Cock, and we know what happened against Manchester United, the man he was marking got a hat-trick, um, <laughs> or Pascal haven't really been up to Calvin's standards. But who is? Who is in this division? No one, really. No one's up to that boy's standards. Um, so Calvin in there, but as I say, if he is out, which I don't think he will be, but he may be, Pascal will go in there. Creswell will come in the back line for me. And then of, of Calvin in the eight, as it were, I would expect Matthias Click on the right, Jack Harrison, 
Dan James on the left, or vice versa, sorry, vice versa, switch up, doesn't really matter. And Rodrigo leading the line because we know Bamford as well isn't fit. Sorry, I forgot to mention that just a second ago. Um, so quite a few players out, four shows back, or he'll be on the bench, Somerville. I think there's a case for getting Bay on the bench as well. You'll have Drame, you'll have a number of players, Greenwood, Gelda, it's quite a young bench. Um, but we have enough. I think we have enough to beat Southampton. Of course, it massively helps us that they're without two key players, in Shea Adams and James Ward-Prowse. James Ward-Prowse hasn't been missing from this side in over two years. Two years. That is a long time. So, um, yes, it, it won't be the best lineup Leeds can put out, but it's enough for me to get three points. I am really confident in this game. I do think it's going to be tight. Like I say, we've only got one clean sheet this season. Southampton haven't scored a lot of goals, haven't scored in open play um, since August the 28th, which in football in terms of quite quite a few games, uh, only scored five goals uh, uh, in 2021 in total. And um, so I think it's going to be tight. I think it could be 2-1 Leeds United, although due to them being a bit shot shy and Huds having that back three that will be very strong um, and will, for me, be able to contain Walcott and Armstrong, I'm going to go for 1-0. Uh, Leeds United haven't been scoring hatfuls. Maybe if Bamford's added into the lineup, if he was fit, he's you know, gets on the end. We know that his, his conversion rate isn't massive, but it's better than what Rodrigo's been. I still think, and I have a lot of faith in Rodrigo, that when he gets one of these goals, he will really kick on. What better way to do it against Southampton? Uh, will it be Sally Sue and uh, Bednarak he's up against? He should have the beating of them both, in my opinion. Uh, so hopefully he gets on the score sheet. I'm going to go for a 1-0 Legion at the win with Rodrigo getting the all-important goal. Remember as well, um, we did see a good cameo performance last time out for Tyler Roberts as well. So if Click is struggling in there, or even Rodrigo, expect Tyler to come in there as well. And he'll have my full backing as well in that. But listen, that was your Leeds versus Southampton preview. I'm really confident. I am really confident. Key areas to watch out for Southampton is, of course, the fullback areas, Perot, Livramento. How will our wingers deal with that? We know with Dan James and Jack Harrison, they'll run back and forward, back and forward for fun. Maybe that's why we leave Rafinha on the bench and only call on him if we can. Of course, opinions might change if indeed Calvin doesn't make it. Then Strauch has to go in DM. I'm, I'm OK with the back three. It would be just that DM position. But remember, they have James Ward-Prowse and Shea Adams out, which is massive, massive for them. Only a player separates us in the table. Win this game, it gives us a further cushion and we can then look ahead to Wolves at home the following week. But I am really confident. Okay, the scoreline might not show that, but I am. And I'm going to go for a Leeds United... I, I, I'm aiming on 2 one one nil, but I'm going to go one nil. 1-0 Leeds United with a Rodrigo goal to kickstart his season. Uh, thank you, as always, for watching the Just Your Football Show. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like it if you did. Subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. Get your notification bell smashed. And of course, put your comments in here. And guys, I won't be at the game on Saturday, so therefore I will be doing a watch along. So you can join me for that on Saturday as well. Going live from about half past two. So make sure you join me for that. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Um, if you're watching this now, make sure you check out the follow Mr. Blows. And I'll see you in a bit. Peace out. Leeds, leeds, leeds.